Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Josh and in today's video, let's talk about Alibaba stock. So I've covered Alibaba on this channel before. You can check out my previous video here, but in that video, I did a discounted cash flow model to come up with a fair value of Alibaba stock. So in today's video, I'll be going over the third quarter results that Alibaba reported last week, as well as updating that spreadsheet to come up with a new price target for Alibaba. Just remember that this is not financial advice it's only for entertainment purposes only so don't take my price target as a recommendation for you to buy Alibaba because this is just my own research and what I think the company is worth all right so you might you might think about this company as not what I think about this company all right so take that with a grain of salt not financial advice you can read the full disclaimer down below but in this video I also talk about something I didn't consider in my previous video and that was actually the ant valuation so Alibaba owns 33% of Ant, and I didn't actually include the value of Ant in Alibaba's uh, price target. So today I'll add in that into uh, Alibaba's price target, and you might see um, the price target increasing a little bit from the previous video that I made. So hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Be sure to hit like and subscribe. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. So looking at the Q3 results, Alibaba reported a really good growth number for its core commerce business. As you can see over here, 33% year on year total revenue growth and core commerce has grown by 38%. So core commerce makes up roughly 90% of Alibaba's business. So that's a huge chunk of their business growing at 38%. That is a good result. Alibaba Cloud posted positive adjusted EBITDA for the first time. So in my previous video, I did say that I expected cloud to perform, uh, to hit break even for the first time next quarter. And it's good to see that materialize over here. And they're still growing revenues at 50% year on year. In terms of consumers, there's 902 million mobile monthly active users with 779 million annual active consumers. Alibaba also reported adjusted EBITDA of $9.4 billion and a significant uh, jump in non-GAAP free cash flow of $14.7 billion for the December quarter. Now, if we compare the results with their September quarter reported in Q2, you can see that revenue growth has increased in December, 37 compared to 30%. Cloud has decreased in their revenue growth from 60 to 50%, but that was expected because as the revenue base increases, it's harder to grow that revenue base, okay? So that is usually the case with these high growth divisions. You can see revenue growth slowing over time. And after hitting break even point, uh, you should see profit go up quite substantially. So Alibaba Cloud is at that point at the moment, and I expect Cloud to be a huge contributor to profit going forward. And profitability and EBITDA has increased quite substantially as well. September quarter, 6.1 billion and 6 billion in free cash flow versus 9.4 billion and 14.7 billion in free cash flow. So that's a huge increase in the non gap free cash flow, which we will build into uh, the model later on. And I'll show you the numbers that I've changed in that model as well. In terms of the other news that they have reported on, uh, they talked a little bit about the anti-monopoly investigations. So late last year, Alibaba received a notice that they were being investigated by the state administration for market regulation that it had commenced an investigation pursuant to the PRC anti monopoly law. Basically, there's not much of an update over here. They're just saying that they're fully cooperating with the SAMR and they will update the market when the investigation is concluded. So we might be able to see the results of that investigation sometime during the next few months. Alibaba also provided an update to the Ant Group. And as you can see here, Ant Group is in the process of developing its rectification plan, which will need to go through the relevant regulatory procedures. Therefore, Ant Group's business prospects and IPO plans are subject to substantial uncertainties. Currently, we are unable to make a complete and fair assessment of the impact that these changes and uncertainties will have on Alibaba Group. We will update the market once Ant Group has completed the relevant regulatory procedures 
for its rectification plan. And we also saw from articles uh, two weeks ago saying that the Ant IPO could get back on track if it resolves its issues, according to China's central bank governor. All right, so this is a good sign for Alibaba as a whole. So the IPO might be delayed, but it won't be totally called off. Um, there is a chance that it will be totally called off, but I see that as a really small percentage. So we will build that into our discounted cash flow model. So here we are, here is the discounted cash flow model for Alibaba. So I created a new copy from the previous valuation that I did on Alibaba last month so that you can see the price changes that I have calculated on the fair value of Baba based on my assumptions. So the first assumption that I made was I made a change to the FY21 free cash flow. So the current free cash flow that I'm using for FY21 is the year to date free cash flow for Alibaba on the third quarter. So basically year to date means Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 free cash flow. So I'm being extra conservative because I'm only using three quarters of free cash flow. Q4 will likely be a positive free cash flow result, but we're not going to include that just to be extra conservative here. So what I did was I updated that with Q3's year-to-date free cash flow number and subsequently I kept all the numbers the same as my previous forecast. So as you can see in this tab over here, all the numbers beyond 2022 are kept the same across all my cases as well. So the only number that I really changed is the FY 2021 free cash flow number. So when I changed all those numbers over here, I got an enterprise value of $326.97. So that is very similar to that number over here that I calculated last month of $325 per share. So there's only a dollar change in the enterprise value based on the Q3 results. If we add back the cash plus debt on Alibaba's balance sheet, this gives us an equity value per share of $359.95. So about $360. Previously, it was $351 because the cash balance is much higher in this quarter due to the strong free cash flow that this company generated over the past quarter. Right? So that is an uplift of roughly eight to nine dollars per share, um, not a significant change in the grand scheme of things. However, as I mentioned earlier in this video that I didn't include Ant's valuation in the fair value of Alibaba stock. Alibaba does own 33% of Ant, and if they do have an IPO, then Alibaba is able to sell that stake and return cash to its shareholders. In this uh, spreadsheet here, I added in Alibaba's fair value of Ant stake, and I calculated that to be $14 dollars and 47 cents per Alibaba share. Now I came to this number by using a 15 times earnings multiple. So what I did was I took Alibaba's share of Ant quarterly profit in million dollars. And what I did was I calculate the trailing 12 month profit. I gave it an earnings multiple of 15 times to come up with the value of Alibaba's stake in Ant to be $38.6 billion. Because Alibaba owns 33% of Ant, that means Ant should be valued at roughly 115 $8 billion and that actually aligns with what Bloomberg was reporting last month that uh, the valuation could be seen dropping to $108 billion on crackdown. So that's quite close to my $115 billion valuation and it's actually quite far off from the valuation that they were trying to IPO at which was roughly around $300 billion. So that is a significant haircut to reflect the increase in regulatory risks involved with that industry. So I think $115 billion for Ant is fairly reasonable, an earnings multiple of 15 times. So what I did then was I took the $38.6 billion and divided that by the number of shares outstanding to give you a uh, valuation of $14.47 per Alibaba share. You add that back into the total value, equity value per share derived from the free cash flow generation of Alibaba's core business. And that gives you a uh, total fair value of 374 per share. Now, if you don't think the Ant IPO will materialize, you can just take this out and that gives you still an equity value of $360 per share on Alibaba. So the upside is still roughly 34% even without the IPO. You add back in the IPO, then the upside is 40%. So as you can see here, my fair value has increased slightly by around $10 
after adjusting for the last month's valuation, adding in the ant stake to it. This is my new price target, $374 for Alibaba stock. I think this is a really good value play at the moment. It has so much growth ahead of it. I think the market is just overly pessimistic based on the recent news around Alibaba because of investigations going on as well as the Ant IPO getting caught off. I think this is a good opportunity considering that all other tech stocks at the moment are just quite highly valued. So I am personally building up this position in Alibaba. Recently, I did buy more shares in Alibaba at $270 per share. This is now my third largest stock holding. I might be missing something and that is still um, why you, you should have proper diversification, never go all in on a stock. You know, you could have all the right numbers, but the market could tell you that you're wrong. And that is just the way stock markets work. So never go all in on a particular stock, always maintain a well-diversified portfolio. And for me, um, Alibaba is my third largest position, but that still makes up less than 10% of my total portfolio. Yeah, so let me know what you think about my valuation of Alibaba and the Ant position that they have as well. Always keen to hear your thoughts and I uh, hope you enjoyed this video guys until next time take care